This episode of the Dub Wirecast is sponsored by Buy My Fucking Album. So, buy my fucking album. www.xp.uk. Nice one. Hello, my name's XP. I'm a hip-hop MC, producer, engineer, and general musician based in Leeds, West Yorkshire. Those that know me know I have a lot of time for West Yorkshire-based musicians, and since my days running and hosting the WY Cypher, I've tried to always champion the local community while also maintaining my rapper arrogance that everyone but me is whack and they should all quit, but also maintaining my non-existent self-esteem that I'm actually the wackest around and I should quit. One thing that always reminds me that it's just sick to make music and be a part of Dub Y is talking to other musicians, but in person and not on social media. After convincing myself podcasts are a waste of valuable music listening time, I decided to do one anyway, as at least this way you're listening to good musicians based in or affiliated with the West Yorkshire hip hop scene. And I'll be expanding that out to soul and jazz musicians as well over time. I'll be talking to people I know and hopefully those I don't as well to speak to them about their music and their association with Dub Y West Yorkshire. And just a side thing, I'm going to be constantly saying Dub Y, W Y, West Yorkshire, and interchanging them. So just get over it. In this episode of the W Y Cast, I'm talking to Tony Green, a friend of mine, a good friend of mine who I've known for ages. He actually put me on in one of my first ever gigs. He's been a promoter throughout Leeds for decades. Uh, as well as a record label owner and a, an amazing DJ. He, he's, I, I can't say enough good words about the guy. I'm almost speechless about how good the dude is. Uh, he's such a nice bloke as well. And yeah, responsible for so much good hip hop in Leeds throughout the years. So yeah, man, it's a good one. Tony Green in the house. Have you ever seen It's a Wonderful Life, the film? Yes. <laughs> so you get the premise of you get the premise of the main character who gets um, uh, gets to see what life would have been like had he not existed. I was wondering this morning, what what would Leeds hip hop scene, what would the whole Yorkshire hip hop scene look back if Tony Green had never existed? And that head shake shows me that you don't think the same thing. But genuinely, I was looking through like what I mean. I was I think I was just halfway through your Instagram. I was like, he put Craig Charles on his first DJ set. What the fuck haven't you done for hip hop in Leeds, man? <laughs> it's been amazing. So, and for starters, um, let's talk about my in 2007 when I had my little band and a group of people, and you ha already had a different artist booked who I knew. They fell through, and then you ended up putting us on for our first gig ever. And we did like a back to back three hours of rehearsing. And we did, I did my first ever pretty much live gig with a, with a band, certainly at your, at one of your nights, man. I love that. And you've been putting on stuff with. Where, where the fuck did the hip hop start? Because you're the son of a professional footballer, Blackpool's Tony Green. That's right, that's right. <laughs> where did the love of hip hop start for you? Was it in Blackpool? It was in Blackpool, yeah. So it, it, it gripped everybody. Yeah. Um, it gripped us all at, at primary school for about a year and a half when we all decided we were breakdancers. When's this? So early So this is in Blackpool at Holy Family uh, Catholic Primary School. Nice. Yeah. Where in, all the hip hop starts. Yeah, Philip Manning. <laughs> Um, Mark Inley, you know, we all, everybody did it. You know, when you, when people look back and go, I was there in 80, whatever, everybody was. Yeah. It was just, it was a craze. So we, you yo-yoed, you break danced, and you know. What was your breaking like? It was awful. Was it? Yeah, yeah it was awful. And I couldn't, I got a book. I got Beat Street for Christmas. Nice. Off, and, I, and, I, and I just to look at the book and I watched... The film, I watched Breakdance, yes. the film, is, is deemed not credible now due to... Literally what Monk said when I interviewed him the other day, was like, people don't ref rate it, but that started me off. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was amazing. So, yeah, and I, co I couldn't do it. I just, well, I'd watch and think, I haven't got this. <laughs> I haven't got <laughs> but you this. wanted to go down and do it and yeah. be amongst people who were doing it, right? That's it, and then it disappears, you know, and, it, and bear in mind, I'm in a town, not a city, so I don't have all these brilliant cultural um, influences. Yeah. So, yeah, then rediscovered again at 10, 11. And you yeah. were younger than that when you you say rediscovered at 10, 11. Yeah, because so it disappeared. So it's like what kids were doing. Oh, yeah, because okay. you're, you're listening to the charts, so you're into whatever. You're, sure. you're eight years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nowadays, it's Capital Radio for an eight-year-old. I know, yeah. It's tough, isn't it? And then it was Radio 1. So, yeah, then rediscovered it. 
um because it's a high school thing and then there was a gang of us at high school darren teasdale uh dave smith chris Steele, myself um dave was a tagger das could tag i couldn't write but i when i got on to, when i got a pair of turntables which wasn't a pair of turntables it was just a deck and i got some blue tack and i just got it i got it straight away i was like you just got to count the beats i wasn't musically trained or anything but it was just a technical thing to connect the records mixing so. them yeah, just putting, so I could put a tape deck in the middle of the room. I, I hate stories like this because every DJ tells them and I watch I them. I love hearing them. I, I hate, I will, I'm just want to start from the origins if that's yeah, cool, well, man. That's but it, like, but it, it, the DJs tell them like it's I some sort shit. of, oh my God, that's why I'm so big. You know, I was doing it from day one, but I think again, everybody I was. did ask it. I did. Uh, yeah, that, I guess. Well, no, it's not the case because I think of you as like sort of original generation hip hop. Like in that you were doing it, one of the first people doing it in Leeds, maybe not the first but like that, you're, you're still a generation above me. So like your stories are all quite similar, how you got into it. Whereas we came through in the 90s and we were like, oh, Fuji's are in the charts and I'm 11. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, and that was so far down the line in terms of hip hop. Like. Well, that's it. Well, I, well, when I arrived in Leeds, it was obviously that I, I wasn't part of all that original. Game. Why did you come to Leeds? What was the university? Oh, sick. What did you do? Information systems and management oh, studies. That sounds, that sounds sexy. Yeah. Is it good? Yeah. I'm, I'm a BSc, honest. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was good. I loved it. I loved it. Um, just that whole experience is a privilege. It's a privilege now that, you know, I got grants and stuff to come. Of course. You, you so you were in Leeds in what late? Is that the late 90s? 92. 92. Early 90s. That's when I arrived, 92. So that was just ready to go. I brought my decks. Sit. I could scratch by then, so I'd already... Were you I called was... T-Breaks at that point? No, Shane Fenton named me T-Breaks. What, um, what was your name at the time, or you just Tony DJ? Just, DJ yeah, Tony I wasn't Green. even called Tony. I, I, did, I was called Greeny. Greeny, yeah, fair enough. And when I arrived in my halls of residence, they, what's your name? And I thought, this is the moment. I'm going to be Tony, and I've never been a Tony. I'm going to be a Tony. And I went in as Tony, and that's it. So I wasn't Tony, I wasn't Tony Green until I was 18. Math. Yeah, always just greeny. Greeny just for green. our Blackpool is just, I still go back so there. You go and back just, and they're like, yo, it's, yeah, it's greeny. greeny. It's greeny, <laughs> greeny, greeny. And obviously my dad being a footballer there, yeah. he was Tony Green. Were you that's, treated as a god? Because it's like, oh shit, that's your dad. He's the guy. Um, or... I don't know. I don't know about that. It's just, he's a, you know, he's a well-loved character in that town. Yeah, you know? still gets like Blackpool... Blackpool um, social media page will still be going, oh, do you remember this goal yeah. by your dad or whatever? You know, and he's not, and socially he's still out and about drinking with everybody and nice. having fun. And nice. So he's sort of, he's part of the culture there. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. So being brought up with that, you're just brought in. Yeah, I remember being, I just remember loads of stories being around him and meeting the cast of Heidi High. And, <laughs> um, you know, and I, I got to the point, I was so arrogant. I would say to my dad, like, has Kenny Zagleish met me yet, dad? You know. <laughs> <laughs> just ticking them off. Yeah, like, yeah. Can we meet Paul Ince? Yeah. Um, uh, so you so you came to uni in '92 and you brought your decks. So were you were, were you just like straight on a set, or were you just playing in the halls? Just or? playing, just playing in the halls, and I'd get to I'd get to play some parties. I mean, to be honest, I look back and I wasn't really. I was a good technical DJ, but I wasn't a good party DJ. You know, no. I, I, no, I think that took a few years of seeing. I, you Were you like, how, this song's right and F you? Yeah, not like. playing Tough Crew for a 18-year-old girl's yeah. party and things like that. You know, <laughs> yeah. just I would get things wrong and wrong and then think, why have I cleared the floor? Why have I cleared the floor? Yeah. And then starting to understand more and more, you know. Do you have a massive collection even by that age? Or do you, yeah, were you... no, it was good. Yeah, I, I spent all my money on records, always did. Yeah. Um, and then got to uni, still spent all my money on records. Yeah. Where was popping in 92 for records? Where were you going in Leeds? Well, for I like? was still, I was charity shops, always was charity yeah. shops and boot sales from the off. So my parents used to take me to boot sales. And that, so I was picking up, you know, before you could just go on Discogs, obviously. Yeah. Before, before, before. That's what everyone always says. But <laughs> it, was a, it was a different thing. But yeah, I would, um, where did we go? I mean, Way Ahead was open. Oh. Jumbo was open. Yeah. Crash. Jim I got loads of stuff from Crash. Woolworths closing down sale was amazing. Was Eric, yeah, I got all my electro albums. Uh, Eric B and Rakim. Sick. From Woolworths closing. Oh. Um, just, it, it was just, vinyl was around. Because it was the, and if places were shutting, you would get cheap stuff. And that's all I wanted to buy. I wasn't paying. Yeah, top dollar for no, it, yeah. Now and then, it, I bought an iced tea import for £9. Don't think the <laughs> prices changed, you know. They did, yeah, 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 yeah. They were expensive then. 
Yeah, yeah. And then they sort of disappeared off and then the price went crazy. So yeah. you must be very grateful for the younger self who stocked up on all them records. <laughs> I don't know. I just put them all in the one. shop. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, you yeah. end up selling them on to release. We'll talk about that in a bit. Jeez. Yeah. Um, so, when, so did you ever get like, when was your first like resident DJ kind of stuff? Well, I got, there was a, I used to party at a club called Columbia. This was, I'd, I'd done parties, but yep. then Columbia was Wednesday nights at the warehouse. At this point, I was probably 20, 21. Right, right. Um, a guy called Matt DeGorgio, Matt's sister, Rebecca, ended up, I think, marrying the owner of Norman. Okay. Norman Bar. Oh, yeah, yeah. But don't quote me on that. Okay, yeah, yeah. But Matt was in Leeds, really cool, cool guy. He had this Wednesday night that was banging. So downstairs, Judge Jules, um, Pete Tong, you oh, know, right. it was all, uh, Sonic. It was the big banging sort of house people downstairs. And were you playing house down there? No, yourself? no, I, I was going to the upstairs room and listening to another guy playing house. So I, I wrote a script. It was one page of A4. I learned the script. I learned the script. I learned the script. And then I just more or less door stopped Matt and says, look, I've been to your night. I went upstairs. This is what I heard. This is what I wanted to hear. This is what I can bring to the table. This is what I'll do for you every week. This is what I'm going to bring in at the end. He went, you got it. I said, like, yes, I've got my residency. Nice. And I, yeah. And it was just... I wasn't going to let no happen, and that was it. It, it. We just had so much fun up there. We we were bringing trip hops, a lot of the ninja tune stuff, the mo wax. Yeah, uh, just bringing at the uh, time it was just yeah. getting like popping as well, right? That was it. So we, we, you know, it was a student night. So again, not a local based thing. But I was still in a student bubble. Yeah. But to me, this was the coolest thing I ever could have got. You know, and it led to so many fun nights. Just having that Wednesday, and I don't, I don't think we crafted something that was legendary musically but we all got together and played yeah you know combine was playing who's now mr big at, at, in the uh, promotion scene um i mean he's mr big now he's doing guy. Th three three thousand sellout shows a week you know it's like in, in, in incredible stuff um there was loads of us who just went on to do really good stuff it feels like a lot of your colleagues or people you knew at the time went on to do the be the best of the best or be the guys. They do, they do. And it seems like the option was definitely available to you to have been completely wrapped up in music still now. I know you are and you have a label and such like that, but you know what I mean? Well, you've, you've chosen to your, your work to be not that. Was that like a conscious choice because you're like, it's a bit of a... I don't know how interesting this or? is, but I was just shocked at the end of the, 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 the university experience when they all disappeared to London and I didn't was like, where are you all going? Right. Well, th that was it. Yeah. No, but this is my move. I've come from Blackpool to Leeds. There is, <laughs> That's the hustle. There's yeah, no yeah. more move. So there was no, there's never a point in you when you were like, oh, I'll go to London then. Because I mean, even coming up being 19, 20 rapper, I'm like, you can get a lot done in London. Yeah. No two ways about it. No, I mean, the, the London thing is, is I don't have regrets. I do regret it. I should have gone. Really? Yeah, I should have gone to London. I should have gone to New York. I should have cut, cut my teeth against the best. True. And, I, and, I, and then I would know who I am. And, it, and I, I, honestly, I just think that it's, I got my, my stepsister who lives, she's a big in the marketing thing now. She's, she was the head of marketing for Sky Arabia. So Jeez. a massive G out mm. in, in, in the Middle East. Yeah. And she had a flat in Dalston and offered it to me, a room for 50 pound a week rent. And nice. I said, no. Oh. Yeah. What were your reasons at the time? Just, just, just I'm, I'm in Leeds. I'd just been traveling. I'd gone to Australia for a year. I'd come back. I was I'd just hooked up with Moose, who used to run the Sound Clash label with Chris Madden, Dean Kavanagh. Yeah. Dean Kavanagh was a Hollywood scriptwriter now, you know, and I just got in with Moose, who I loved his show on Dream, and, and said, me and you are doing a label. We're going to do this. You know what you're doing. I've got this energy. Yeah. I've written a business plan all the way around Australia. I'm ready to go. And, and I, this was me back. And then she's saying, come to London, 50 quid a week. Like, no, I've got my guy. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and was that what became Fresh Jive, that label? No, or? no. Fresh Jive was before all that. Fresh Jive was 98. So that oh. label was 2002. Right. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, Fresh Jive was 98. So Fresh Jive was uh, named by, who's now the head of, he was the head of Head Candy last time I saw him, Phil Damn. Favisham. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he, he, he said, look, I want a hip hop thing on the Saturdays. You guys are smashing the Thursdays here and blah, blah, blah. My idea for the night is is going to be called Fresh Jive, but you come up with your own name. <laughs> so we went to the pub, like every name we came back, I just keep going back to Fresh Jive. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's yeah. so good a name. But it's, yeah, so we, we launched um, 
so we launched Fresh Jive on a Saturday with Phil's blessing. Yeah. And it wasn't just hip hop we did, but but we resurrected um, break dancing. So people like Paul Weston, DMW, um, Shane Fenton, they'd started breaking again. Yeah. And um, no, no, being old to us, they they were the original proper breakers, not me pissing around with a, a magazine, <laughs> but they could actually break. Yeah. You know, and of this area is that of this there, area there, yeah. there. So they could. Well, I wasn't here in the eighties, but obviously I've studied what they've done now. Yeah. So it, it, in this area, like we had some guys in Blackpool who could break. Johnny Wild, uh, Wayne Hawkins, they could break. Yeah. So they were the legends, you know, of Blackpool. Yeah. In Leeds, you had um, your Millsy, Shane Fenton, DMW, Paul Weston. These guys could break, so they they could they were natural. They could naturally pick up the dance, which I still find ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and then these YouTube channels now stuff which they didn't have. So anyway, they'd been doing it. It was the time to resurrect break dancing. So as a marketing thing, as a promoter. Yeah. No, it's a culture like 02, guy. 03, do you say? No, like this 000. is 98. Oh, let's go. Okay, okay, I've yeah. rewound the clock a little bit Sorry. just to say with the start of Fresh Jive. Yep. 98, Favisham, film names, it gives us the Saturday night, break dancing. Well, these guys in Leeds are doing it so they can put a show on. We'll, yep. put, we'll dedicate a room to break dancing. Sick. And, that's, and that was the... So Fresh Jive got this affiliation with, with that. But it was also... We were putting on Rennie Pilgrim and Tipper. Um, big, heavy new school breaks out. We were the first in Leeds to do that. So yeah. they, they were they were the first to come here. Freak Nasty. Uh, but the tons of great guys came. So you'd almost have like a scratch perverts and then a tipper. And then a, so they, they were breaking to all sorts. But they luckily if I'd have been in Blackpool doing that, there would have been no room to put them because there was no breakers. Of course. Yeah. So you know, fair play to those guys. For, and then made the night look really cool. Yeah, yeah So yeah. it was still a student thing. They'd come down, see breakers, yeah. see all these amazing scratch perverts, DJ craze, all these world champions were coming through and the energy in there was, was ridiculous. I mean, if you'd have gone to London, it would have been a freaking tragedy, wouldn't it? Because like what you brought through at Leeds, who the hell was going to bring that through? No one was going to like do I don't that know, put that I, effort in. Well, maybe not put the effort in, but no. the, the opportunity was there. You know, it, the infrastructure was there. Phil had that set this matter. club up. That's never mattered, though. The infrastructure's always there. No, but people I'd... who put the work in, the kind of people who are going to put submit something to a promoter and go, this is what I'm going to create in your space. Like, so few people have got that get up and go, I think. You and need you're that. One of the you few. have to have that. Mate, and I, you're one of the few people I'll even be talking to on podcasts who've got that that get up and go to actually, like, want something and show it. And, yeah, like, you've, got to want, you've got to want it more than anything. It's, I mean, Leeds does suffer from that sometimes. Um, and it's been really good to me as a city, musically and yeah. family-wise and everything, friends. Of course. But, you know, I've become really obsessed of late with the infrastructure of the music. How do you mean by scene. that? Well, I just, you know, if you, walk, if, you go to, if you go to a job at a corporate company, so you go to work for BT, yep. you go in at a, a level, everybody has a role, everyone has a job, and you can, you can, you can, you can, survive in that environment yep. you can learn the rules you can rise yeah i'm not saying it's a positive environment but there is this infrastructure for you to go up. all the way to the top potentially well, yeah. if you're good at what you do and yeah if you know how to play the game Fully. if you know how to play the game it's there for you and what i think is lacking in leeds is the game and i think you, you know you there's all sorts of conversations here but youtube came in and gave you the game Say so you, I'm just saying, gave anyone the game. Yep. Yeah, put, do a video. You get a million views. Oh, if you don't do a video and you don't get a million views, you're not in. <laughs> yeah. So that's the game then. Yeah, Is that yeah. the game for hip hop? You do a video and there's nothing else. And, and, and what? I guess if someone wasn't on YouTube, but they were like, they grafted every open mic and they turned every head doing that. Everyone was like, whoa, have you seen this guy? I just saw him on an open mic the other week and then they put him on a gig and then he supports someone at Broodnell and then he's doing a main set at Broodnell. But the end result, the end thing is, the end play is a train to London. <laughs> yes, Wherever exactly. Wherever they go in it, like exactly. as high as they go, it'll be, they'll be down in London. Yeah, because London as a city has that has natural the... infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I'm really um, obsessing about at the moment as I approach 50 is um, I'd really like, I'm really, I'm really trying to set set something up that at least lets people like one one thing i loved about what you did with the wy is you created such a powerful platform for artists that everyone had to get onto your video cypher is this yeah the WI cypher, yeah and i know that's a burden 
but it is, it, it is a burden because all of a sudden you're like, I didn't want 50,000 emails. <laughs> I didn't want all these things, but you created something that it would became a rite of passage. If yeah. you can get onto there, you're at first base. Yeah, absolutely. And first People base, are paying attention out of town yeah. to those artists, certainly. And, and first base is really important. You know, and I, th and I can't see, I'm looking around and I can't see. Fresh Jive was first base. Defo. It was a great first base. When I was doing the Elba Room, it was a brilliant first base. Yep. And and first base is, is, is really important. Like getting on, I know people, I, I don't know whether people turn their nose up at, at it or not, but I like the BBC introducing. I think it's a great first base. Yes. You know, you get they put you on and they play you on the radio and you get that experience. From someone who's sent a few things to BBC Introducing to get an email going, yeah, it's been listened to, and then fuck all else happens. I'm not feeling them too hard, but... <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. So that's... A, that, that, I don't get first base with BBC base Introducing. Shouldn't be, a first base shouldn't be so easy to just get from an email. Now, True, yeah. My, crit it, my criticism of them is they're so not tuned in that they don't realize who you are yeah which means their first idea. base is is flawed they've got a platform but yeah. they don't have the cultural heads around it operating it to be able to recognize who's coming through whose families are this who's done this who's worth backing who's they don't know any of this stuff it's just a well they'll have a thousand songs to listen to and they'll probably five second five second at best if that yeah yeah they're look. probably just saying like can we do the first 150 on the thousand yeah. list give, tonight, it to the, give it to the student who's yeah. <laughs> experienced yeah, yeah well I've actually asked John to come in he's going to play guitar <laughs> you know it, 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 so it is it is a flawed it's not uh, it's it, because of that it's not aspirational yeah whereas your Yours was aspirational because it was really cool. We've got to get in there, get on the videos. And, mm. and then you become part of your production thing. And then you had the label and you've got this, you know, the, the, the figurehead of uh, the sort of, well, the awareness for it all with Luna C there and everybody knowing who he is. And yep. then he's battle rapping. So, you know, whatever, I don't know what your thoughts on any of that. But There were a lot of different names of, of different sites who'd done a lot. So like Luna had done a lot in the battling field, but then someone like Jack Flash had done like end of the week that ch that world championship and then yes. and there were there were different people in different levels or like producers that people recognize like Jack Dans was on one and from yes. Friends of the Style so I think it just helped that everyone was kind of felt like everyone had something covered in hip hop and then you had graffiti artists tagging up my studio in the back and stuff so you had kind of a lot of the elements right there and the producers who were making the beats we were rapping on their beats so it was, it was a good. beautiful cyclical thing for like as far as that was concerned it even, was even if we did get someone fired from Coronation Street but. which is yeah, but that becomes part of folklore <laughs> then doesn't it you know you, you want one big controversy and there it is there it was yeah a year after we'd finished a year <laughs> no i think at the time it went around it was just no one could really talk about it. but yeah, yeah it, was, it was really important it, 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 and you also had the videographer as well you yeah, had, yeah, um, yeah you helps. had a great videographer you need, the, you need the whole thing don't you? you need the whole package you need definitely need certain elements of the package when you think of a record label you know what what you're signing to you're signing to an infrastructure that's got departments so they might have a really good press department, yep. but a really weak licensing department. Yeah. Or they might have a brilliant licensing department and their radio team isn't so hot. So you, you, but you, you'll get on board with them for various different reasons. Yep. Uh, and I don't even think artists, that are, the younger ones I'm speaking to, they don't even know those reasons. They don't know why they're giving their music to a record label. They just think this is what you do. But it's, I think more questions of why. Yeah. You know, why do I, why is self-releasing not great unless you're unbelievable? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, or get, it, getting a real name in the field or what have you, yeah. Yeah, if you're Amy Winehouse and you want to play guitar on, on YouTube, someone's going to pick you up. Yeah, But course. for the rest of the, the world... How are you going to get spotted? How are you going to get noticed for, like, being you, innit? It's yeah. It's difficult standing above... Well, you've been putting stuff out, so your, your label released. Um, have you found... So you've got quite a few artists on that that you've been putting out over over the course of a few years. Yeah. Have you found s issue with trying to get that listened to, get people, get it in in people's faces, or? Yeah, I, I have, and it's I'm putting my mates on, and then I'm because a, a certain I'm putting my mates on, but I love their music. So I, I I love what they do. I love them as people, and I and I want to work with their music. And it's almost like a pressure-free relationship, which is not a cop out. But at the time I started it, I wasn't, I wasn't confident with how the digital side worked. Press is always changing. Social media was flying up because I don't understand all the moving parts. This, so it was, 
it was a two-way thing. It was like, let me, let me use this music. If you want to put it somewhere else, put it somewhere else. But if you want to give it to me, let me use this music and let me learn a little bit about how this, this is working because it's not working the way that Seaside Tracks worked. Yeah, was that your label as well, Seaside? Yeah, Because yeah, I yeah. had a record of that back in the day. Was that the 98 label before Fresh Jive? Was no, that, the that one was you 2002. Up? That was the Moose one I came back That's from Australia to do. Ah, right. So me and Moose went, were halves on that. And we've reconnected now and it's, and it's, and it's nice. He's living in, uh, Amst- he's living in um, Holland now. Sick. So yeah, he's- Very cool. Osp- He's, he's, he's Holland all over. Spain. <laughs> <laughs> he's just he's told me the name of the town and I don't know it. Fair enough. But um yeah, so he he just knew a lot of people, a really well connected guy and, and, and could sort all that. So it was a lot different. Um and then seeing I just Because when did you press when you pressed vinyl in two thousand and two with Seaside, yeah. did that just fly off the shelves? Well we had a press what... person, which I've always seen the value in. Of course. We had a radio person who was value. different. Right. And then we had a DJ promo person. So three people were pushing these things. You know, that that's why the Fat Boy Slim thing happened. That's what was the Fat Boy Slim? Because he, he sat, we put a Lee Kenny record out. Yeah. Dot, um, Ricky V. Valentine. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Straight out of Compton. Yeah, that's Lee Kenny. The guy who was singing like rap versions. Oh, stuff, it was incredible. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and Fat Boy Slim sampled it without permission for his. Hit single dot slash dot dash dot com. Ah, no way, and yeah. that's him, right? So the first, yeah, yeah, it was that. That's a podcast itself because that that was a that was a. Really, I didn't know this. I don't yeah, think I ever knew this. Bro. But for the record, we got no money. Yeah, we got nothing out of this deal. It was handed back over to Lee's manager, uh, Steve Mulhair. Yeah, and Steve dealt with Universal, and whatever happened, happened. But you guys didn't go. We did. But we're the label guys. He's only heard oh, yeah, of it because of us. I said like... that. Yeah, I said Steve, we're the label. We've just spent two thousand quid pushing this. We got it out of. He only heard it because of you. Yeah, guys. he said, "Let me see the contract." And we <sighs> did, oh, obviously didn't have a contract. And I, and and I just said, "You know what, Moose? This. He's right. We we we're just doing an energy here, and he's dealing with business. So we've got to take this one on the chin. If we want to enter that business thing." Gotta then we, like need, we need we need to get i remember giving you the same advice bro i did i did this i had just verbal agreements with the people who were on my label synoptic prior, prior to 2012 when i um, stopped it and it and i stopped it mainly because we didn't have anything but a verbal contract and it was getting a bit tasty with one of the reasons I stopped it, getting a bit tasty with some of the artists who are on the label who were getting other opportunities. And it's like, okay, at what point is the label getting cut in? And I was like, okay, just leave it. If I, if I just, we just cut ties at this point that it's not complicated for anyone. And I don't have to sit there going, no, really, I put a lot of money yeah. into your recording process and yeah, exactly. <laughs> getting your name about and stuff, but you and, just gotta and, leave it, it. And in, you know, in hindsight, Steve Mulher was right. Yeah. It, we, we were just given something for free. Yeah. What we did with it was up to us. They didn't ask us to do that. No. We did all that. And yeah, that's what brought it to Fat Boy Slim's attention. But, the, you know, it's not, that wasn't the agreement. So he I was right that. to take it back and he was right to take it on. Um, and whatever happened, I'd love to know what, what they signed and what they did, but it was taken off the shelves. It was taken probably, off radio. We made was, 20 grand and that was that. Who knows? <laughs> who knows? I've never, I've never known what, what, what it was. But yeah, that 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 was um that was an interesting thing. And it, so what I do with released, I've I've sort of I haven't contracted anything or anyone. Okay. And I've and I'm, I want them to I want them to do it. So it's like you I want to launch pub. Then. Yeah, I want I, I need a success story. Yeah. I need someone to go on and be sampled by Fatboy Slim. I need someone to go on and be massive and totally leave us. And just leave us, you yeah. know, and it, so we can say we're the ones who put yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, we got the first album out. Or yeah, we did that. Yeah. We 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 found Groove Armada. You know, we need that sort of story. Yeah, and, and that story. You closing in on on that with any of your artists uh, currently? No, no do you know what it was? I've had a day disrespect. job for ten years, Word. working at Dowsing, Dowsing and Reynolds, doing the hardware and the lighting and all that stuff. So it was all. I couldn't promise anyone anything, and I've not. So I've not. What coming out of that business now and having a little bit more time to see things, I'm now looking around and thinking, right, who's hungry? The person who wants to eat, in my opinion, is called Shauna, Shauna Stapleton. Okay. So I'm hooked up with Shauna and said, Shauna, I love what you're doing. She worked in the record shop for a bit. So she's um, what, did, what sort of stuff? She's doing? she's a house tech sort of um, DJ producer. producer yeah, Sick. she's doing a doctorate in music philosophy she's she's bright and she's into it she's on it she's she's new M- musically i can't 
she knows what she knows that audience she DJs that one she's doing the boiler room nice. in the 24th on the 24th of Feb very cool yeah she's just got it so I said look I, I've got I know how I've run this business and I know how to run a business so let me squirrel away in the background you you front this and let's go halves yeah and she's come up with the title working classics because she wants to do very much a working Jandy's. class that's Jandy's album <laughs> <laughs> but in, in in sort of queer dance music, yeah, you know, to be fair. So, which is what she's representing, and she wants to bring a working class element into it, which she feels is missing. Yeah, uh, which I do. So that that's the sort of that's the partnership. We've but just launched. seeing her spark, seeing how people are responding to her music, that kind of makes yeah. you go, I want to. Yeah, wanna and I said, you know, when, when she's put it all together, she's put the artwork together, she's put the vibe, she's got the artists. Um, do you say you weren't really feeling the music or is it you don't really know the music? No, I am feeling the, feeling the music. I love music? dance music. Yeah, yeah. I love dance music, but I'm not going to put myself out there as uh, as an officiado of, of, of what 18-year-olds want to listen to in a nightclub. Yeah. But I do understand where she's trying to get to as a, as her and a, her brand and I want to facilitate that. But I don't want to interfere with the creative side of it because I think that would just be really wrong. So yeah. I'm staying out of that. Yeah. The same way, you know, when, when I was partnering with Shane at Fresh Jive, I didn't get involved with the breakdancing thing. Nah. He was he would book the dancers, sort it out, sort the floor out. Everything was, the, the authenticity of it was always him. Yeah. Um, that You know, I just like running things and getting things over the line. There was a period of time, quite a long period of time in Leeds, where you were putting on all the hip-hop artists, it seemed, or they were all coming through yours. I mean, you're, the, No you're, one else was. Well... Yeah, but if, I mean, I guess if everyone else was, then there would have been a market for it, but it felt like you were bringing a lot of them too. Um, and that also seemed like a time when you stopped doing that. Was that like, ugh, with the scene? Or were you, were you, you kind of done with the promotion? Or is it you just lost too much money from it when it had gone wrong? Or uh, Yeah, do you know what? Probably all of the above. But it's not, it, it wasn't, it, it's an interesting thing because it, I, I got known for the hip hop stuff, but yeah, I, I knew you for the hip hop stuff. Yeah, but what what I'm, I'm not known for any skill in it. I was known for promoting it, and the the reason I was promoting it and not necessarily promoting other things that I loved is because there was a you know don't have two bridge clubs in a town. If there's a bridge club and everyone goes to play bridge, don't open a bridge club a hundred <laughs> yards down. And, and is that what happened? Well, no, there was no, there was nothing hip hop wise happening. So yeah. it's like, well, look, it needs to happen. Yeah. Um, Shane's in the middle of it all. So let's just do this together. I will get this over the line. I'll get the venues. I'll promote it. We'll, we'll put some money into it, which hip hop doesn't want to do. We'll make, we'll, we'll get this hustle going. But it wasn't. The list of people you brought to Leeds is like a who's who of hip hop. You brought some amazing yeah, artists. Was, into yeah, there was some brilliant stuff, but there was no one else doing it. If I did it now, it would be awful because Ash does the Belgrave. And Hedro House, so he's super friends. Or yeah, super friends. You? So they book. They do a good job, yeah. Yeah, they book. They book acts. Yeah. The, the 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 thing that was different. I saw Ash this morning. He's a good mate. But the the thing that I think we we did differently is that every act we brought, we made sure that it was pumped full of local lineup. You'd and usually put a local artist. Or you'd go out of your way to put a local yeah. artist on support. Sometimes at the detriment of what was going on, and some. Yeah. But that 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 was important because then. They've got to practice. They've got to rehearse. They've got to get an outfit you've together. You've always had one eye in the scene, man, and, that, and that's really yeah. helpful for the lead scene. Instead, you've always had that. But it's, the, it's the level one thing we're talking about. You 100%. need that. That's why I think the dancers were so good in Leeds because they always knew that next week I'm battling an American yeah. that's coming into town, so I've got to practice. Yeah. You know, and I'm not just battling in front of another 55 break dancers, which is normally what those events are. This is in front of. The normal people. Yeah. Normal people go with their girlfriends and watch them dancing, you know, and that that's the promotion aspect, the charisma element of it, which I thought was really important that we brought that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it, there was a gap and we, we filled it, I think, and we tried to put on loads and loads of stuff uh, and bring artists up. And that's why I think when I, when I go out now and I go to hip-hop nights, loads of people say hello because they... Like, you put me on when I was 16, 17, 18, 19. Yeah, it's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm feeling really old, but... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, but it's true. And, it, it, and you think, well, we, we did. We did a lot of shows. So it's nice to see that and people giving you a smile um, because you put them on. That's an interesting one. You went to a... Only recently went to a, quite a grassrootsy hip-hop gig. At I'm the Pacos. talking about the Pacos. Oh, I loved gone. it. I loved and it. And it was all the artists were like... Leeds-ish or West Yorkshire based and they were just artist, artist, artist and you were, you were was it a good do oh, and, yeah, and it was good, a good crowd do. response I just, I just felt the love T Jackson's a good host yeah so he was he's 
he's good. He holds it together with a good energy. Um, the artists were doing the thing. I liked hearing different. There was, some of them was twisting it up with a little bit of garage, and which I liked. Yeah, it wasn't just ninety BPM. No, no, not boom bap or yeah. even trap or whatever. They yeah, were, it's a bit they, of everything. They were they were twisting it up, so it was good. The atmosphere was brilliant. Yeah, ten out of ten for that. On Saturday. Nice. I was. We, I really liked it. We didn't know how good we had it. 2010, 2011, when you started or had some. I don't know what your involvement was, but what you did with Sedgwick Avenue which was a venue down in 20% town. 20% was my involvement. 20% was your involvement. <laughs> yeah. What was the, because that was basically a hip hop bar. Yeah. That was Glenn, Glenn Crossway. So Glenn was an old, an old friend from the 90s and he had a, a bar that he wasn't doing as well as he wanted. Yeah. So I met Quite him. Quite central, wasn't it, as well? Just up from the ground. Yeah, that's really right. Central. Well, Glenn, and Glenn's background is security. You know, he's a, he's, he runs, he's a very successful security guy. He's a people person, but he's, he's got a different crowd of people. So we wanted to inject some music in, and uh, I met him on the Monday. I think it was, yeah, I met him at his house on the Monday. I said, look, again, I've done the script. Look, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, and I can do this, and I can bring this in. And he went, right, do you know what? Just go for it, but you open a week on Friday. Shit! Like, Whoa, I've just got a bar. You can have 20%. And you and you came to him and you were like, and you're going to call it Cedric Avenue? It's no, going to be like hip-hop specific or? No, tricky name that. He was reading the hip, the KRS-One. Um, Tricky Defenders of Style, Tricky? No, 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 no. Oh, right. He was there on Saturday. Yeah, was he? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. nice, nice. Yeah, it was good to see him. Um, no, it was my friend Richard Tricky, and he was uh, he was reading the Keras One book. He was living with me at the time. He was my um, lodger. Yeah. And he uh, he just opened a page and went, why do you call it Sedgwick's? So I phoned Glenn and said, Sedgwick, there's a place, Sedgwick Avenue, you know, it's the birth of hip hop. We'll call it Cedric's. Oh, no, no, Cedric Avenue. We'll do the whole thing. Yeah. So, confused taxi drivers everywhere. Ah, you can take me to Cedric Avenue. The, the, we don't, there know, we don't know it. Yeah, we don't know it. So we used to get that all the time. The taxi driver doesn't know it. Yeah, but that was good because it was just as you were... It was it the was, cipher. It was holding a candle to the moth. So everything, loads of launches were there. There was, a, I remember the eject party was particularly amazing, but you had some great, you, I'm sure you got like Pete Rock and a few other like yeah, big yeah. names down Souls there. Souls of Mischief, it, Jeru. That's it. And it was only what, 300 capacity? Oh, and that would be shoulder to yeah. shoulder, wouldn't it? If yeah, like yeah. in that situation. But that's where, you know, like you, you talk, we're talking about your pack horse gig, those gigs would have been going on there. there. Yeah, 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 any yeah, hip hop yeah. stuff would have been going All on there. All had to go like, through there. Yeah. yeah. And that was it. And it just became a really good hangout. Um, yeah, there was hip hop karaoke one night. Hip hop karaoke, was, yeah, we did it all. Henry, oh. Defenders of Style, was a manager. Bravo was behind the bar. There was, it was we didn't just, know how good we had it. Oh, it was it was class. So we had so much fun. What happened to it? Um, Were you able to elude? I don't know. No, it's fine. I think there was Glenn. Glenn, as I say, Glenn's a, a very a really successful dude. Yeah, his business was going through a bit of transition. The bar was under a little bit of pressure from that. I think that's, I mean, they did it out beautifully. They'd sunk so much money into it. Yeah. Um, and don't get me wrong, all these things were great, but he wasn't making a right lot of cash. Fair enough. So, you know, something had to give. Um, and it, it, it was short lived. It really so was. It was short lived. And it was, um, you know, we, we still chat about it and it, it could have got through that bump. Yeah. But I think. COVID had killed it. We all, yeah, we probably would have killed it, but we were all, I think we all sort of had loved that time and we were all ready just to go enough for whatever reason. Um, so yeah, it, it, it just, it ended and it ended abruptly. You, was it Was it just, a suit, you, you started on Friday and then you're finishing on Thursday yeah, as well? That sort of, that sort of idea, it was just, it was over in a heartbeat. Um, were you gutted it, or yeah, were you just the, like the that's rent life? was really high the rent was I remember oh, I'm not thinking, surprised oh, gosh this, this, this rent is high it's everything was whoa this is this needs this could be with this crowd it doesn't need to be here it really doesn't need to be here we could move this yeah, to the edge of town yeah. and everybody will just come like the pack horse yeah um, oh the primrose they do the, they do a hip hop night yeah the primrose, it, it didn't need to be this sort of premium because he'd done it up as a place where cocktails and and it just became something else. So I think the the money invested and the and the the, the rent on the bar and problem the, with hip hop heads is they'll tag up the toilets. In it and <laughs> yeah, well, I had all that up. to deal with. Smash my teeth. Oh got yeah, you, you got glassed over yeah. some graph beef while well, you were I just, just split up a fight. Yeah, yeah, I just jumped jumped in the middle of them. Whoa, whoa, pff, got glass in the face. Had to go to hospital. So you just like, uh, I'm, you know, people talk about graphene. I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I get it. It's the element where. 
they can go to prison. So it's more serious than you don't go to prison for breaking. Yeah. Or DJ, and you go to prison for for. So I get it. It's a serious thing, and they they need that respect. But it's horrible when it comes into you. They were tagging up next doors, uh, vehicles. And next door shop. So I'd come into work as anybody would want to do the next morning, slightly hungover, yeah. and just be greeted with hate. Yeah. And then we became this sort of beacon of hate on the on the thing. Mm. And I thought, for this is giving everybody that's putting loads of energy into this place bad a bad name. Yeah. Because yeah. you, you're you're destroying it for everybody. So then it became like doing gigs at the O2 with you know with like we did the uh, Doom thing. Oh yeah, yeah. It was just so hard to get anything over the line because the security had to check everybody on the way in for pens, not for knives, for pens. And it, I just got really tired of the whole thing, thinking, do you know what? If this goes with this, it's too much stress. If I don't see Foz promoting massive house nights, having no, a whale no of a problem. time and going through this. Nah, he's not, he's not having next door's car. It's kind of part and parcel of the culture, isn't it? That yeah. There's writers and all the rest of it, but you can't... Can't go anywhere nice. And is that because I'm trying to package it, you know, mm. and, I, and I'm at fault here because I'm trying to package something that really is just a natural energy. So I was questioning myself and thinking, I can't force this and I don't want to force it into places. Yep. So that's a, weirdly a big reason why I just didn't move Sedgwick because I didn't want to take all that into another community yeah, and yeah. bring all that heat. And It's sad to hear, but I totally it's Honestly, it's the it, truth. Man. So... As much as I'm hats off to 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 all the graffiti guys and what they do, and all the writers, it's an incredible art form. Yep. But I I just lost energy arguing with my neighbours on I'm tr just trying to run a business. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and it was too much, so I, I consciously swayed away from anything that would tra attract just that negative. Just yeah, just confrontation in my life all yeah. the time yeah 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 you haven't it, been glass since <laughs> well the glassing <laughs> incident i'm not blaming on writers that's just two kids having a fight his mate stepped in through a glass and it hit me in the face but i'm not blaming that it was the more the fact that even if they'd have just blammed our toilets over and over that's fine mm. it was the doing all the neighbors it just made me look like a bit of yeah. a wally yeah, and, uh, and and I had to deal with it and pay for it and deal with it and pay for it and I just I just stopped the, the fight went from me and I was like you know what I'm, I'm done yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah close it and I can't move it and that's why I didn't really want to take Cedric on the road yeah fair enough fair enough it was a sick thing thanks for thanks for doing it for the yeah, period yeah, of time that you was did good. I was good. <laughs> if someone offered me the opportunity to do the same thing now I wouldn't take it up I just think it'd be Absolutely hard. Yeah, oh, well, exactly. Like, so, what you yeah. did was amazing, but it drained. It drained. Dra you it drained me doing that, and that was round my house. Never mind having to apologise to next door's <laughs> like bar or whatever. Well, it has a, cars up. Yeah, there's probably more at play to that, but I remember at the time just thinking, is it worth the fight? Um, mm -hmm. Is it worth the fight? You so know. speaking of worth the fight, um, you opened a bloody record store. Yeah. Not not content with being the coolest guy in the world for opening a hip hop <laughs> bar, you then went full record store, man. Yeah, and I absolutely adored that record store that was in Corn Exchange released, which was named. It was that came before the label that well, it was it's called. Gonna, released. It's going to come here now, so it's going to be based in here now. Released records. Yeah, well, hopefully we're going to, you know, hopefully we're going to get a container. Yeah, and the a shipping park, container. And we're going to fill it full of records. And people, what, just during the day? Will, be like, will there be yeah, someone manning open, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Day? We might open Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We could do events in there. And How you know, big's the container events well, in there? Well, I'm thinking signings and things. You know, Sick. listening parties. Oh, we're just doing here. Turn this into a stage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, th this isn't being... This isn't being utilised like it could be. No. So... Um, have you had live instruments in here? I know you no. do live DJs and stuff like that, but is that something that you're potentially thinking yeah, of doing? I mean, all, in that all corner this, there, you could have a do. This is all you? modular. Right. Modular. modular. <laughs> it comes out. Sick. So, yeah, so you, you so could... So you could have that whole space as a stage, effectively. That's, that's what we're going to do. Proper cool, that. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So we're... I mean, it'd be great if we're doing... Um, if we can do some launch parties for albums and listening parties. You know, with yeah. those... 
beautiful speakers up there. And well, I'm going to be doing this Dubai Wednesdays thing, third Wednesday of the month, uh, putting on playing some West Yorkshire hip hop out of here as well. So hopefully build off the back of that and have some hip hop listening parties for local dudes and stuff. Well, like exactly. That That's out. an interesting one because so I've been telling people like, so why is there no rappers there? And it's like because the, they'll fucking ruin it. <laughs> That's a good question. And it, there and will it, be rappers. I think there at will some be stage. rappers, yeah. but it, I think at the start it's. It's that level one thing again. Yeah. Just get on the playlist. Yeah. And hear your music in, in there and meet people. In it. Socialise and grow. and Because um, the majority of opportunities you've talked about are all people you've known. This I know this guy and he suggested this to me. Yeah, and I came yeah, to him yeah. with that idea. And it's only because you knew him. He didn't like, I'll oh, Google and find someone on Facebook. It was like, you knew the guy in it. Like, yeah, yeah. And it, was it the same sort of going back, sorry, to the record store? Was it someone at Corn Exchange who was like, I've got this space, you can yeah. do something here. Adam I'm Warner, he was running it and he said, I'll, I'll give you uh, I'll give you it for six weeks, I think, for free. What? So I said to Marco, come on, we'll just sell our tunes. Um, and then we got the money in, in De- at the end of December and said, well, we either shut it. It's 2019, by the way. 20. No, before Did it was five years. Oh, five, so was 2018. It, 2018 when you started. Right, right. So you had so a good it must be Christmas years. 2018. Right. Uh, and then we said, we've got the money for the sale of the records. Do we shut or do we buy more records? <laughs> <laughs> so he quit his job at Jumbo and went and ran it. Oh, he was working at Jumbo, yeah, was he, Marco? Yeah. He Amazing. was working at Jumbo. So Anisha would just work in the shop. Um, and then he just quit his job and took it on. Yeah. So that was it. So then he, he used the money, started purchasing new records. And it just it just grew. Because he's the guy. He's like genuine, bona fide record store owner type. Yeah, yeah, Knowledge. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing Marco doesn't really no, seem to all. know about one genre or the next. He like. will. He'll tell you about the punk section. He'll tell you about the 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 soundscapes. You know, it's cracking. And I've seen him yeah. do it. Like if someone's like, "Oh, what's good to listen to?" He will like go, "Oh, actually, this is just coming." Yeah, in. Like, and really he's a musician. Be about it. Yes, of course, so he, a really good mate. He can producer. play, and he's a producer, so he's he's got. Uh, he's got an understanding of the music as well. It's not, you know, how it's made and what it is. So I always think he's he's got good ears. Yeah. Yeah, so hopefully, you know, we'll give it a go here. We'll yeah. get food going, hopefully a container, but if not, we'll do it We'll do it somehow. We'll yeah, get it, yeah, We'll yeah. get it here, um, start doing record fairs again and all that stuff. If you were going to, so if there was no shipping container, what are you going to use the middle to put some records no, it, in, do it, you think? or Because up there, it's tricky to, yeah, it'll, tricky to look through, I suppose. Exactly. Isn't it? The only way you can do it up there Digitally, is if like, it's new stuff. Yeah, so if it's I brand see. new releases and someone's like, I, I know this one, I'm getting it, then it's here for you. Is that all? Um, is that all? That's all digitally written down somewhere. Yeah, right? this is all on the you website. You could have QR codes on the table and you're like, look through yeah, our, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, look exactly. through our Exactly, you could scroll through. Simpler. Look, people always want to look and feel, but if it's a new record, yeah, and you you know you can come here, have a pint, and you're taking on two records that you know what they are. Yeah, yeah, it's and they're different brand new, digging. Like, of course, it is. the digging experience. We need the uh, container. Yeah, you could do it with a record player. Check if it's like skipping all the way through or what have you. We need it. We need the container. But if it's <clears> new <throat> stuff and we're just going to be bespoke, electronic, jazz, soul that sort of thing, then new releases can go up there happily because people will come ready yeah. and they know what they're getting. You don't necessarily need to dig. Nice, nice. But going back to what, what when we talked about the corporate structure yeah. and the level one thing, I think that's what I've, what I've been obsessing with Leeds is, is, how to, is how to create something that gets them ready for London. Yeah. You know, that's the key thing. You can't avoid London. You have to go. Yeah, Night Mezzle Wax would, would travel there. Of course he would, yeah. He's not, yeah, he's yeah, not yeah. just a Leeds guy that made it. He put the effort in. He you traveled. can live in Leeds, but you might have to spend two weeks a month in London. Two or days a week you. there. Whatever you're going to have to do, you're going to have to go be, be in that energy. Uh, you're going to have to be in that infrastructure. Just for your, for your mental state, just to understand that it's an industry. Yep. There's people eating off it. How, do, how are they going to eat off you? You know, so a line I'm using at the moment with people, and it's, a, you know, it's, if we were to spend 5,000 quid on you, where would we spend the money and how yeah. do we get it back? And I don't know the answers. No, nah, no. Nah. It's like, what? Well, where do we spend that five grand and where does it come back? And it's, it can't, you can't just say, I'll oh, press some more vinyl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, All right, well, that is a model and a simple one. Press the records. But now you're going to have to sell it. You're going to have to knock on every door until you've sold every one yeah, of them. Yeah, you still need distribution. Like, of course, yeah, and yeah, you, yeah. you nail that before you press, press the records. Because um, I did press an album without distribution, unreleased. Yeah, and it was I just that assumed was, uh, with, wings winging it, winging it. Yeah, word. and it, because I just wanted the same distributor again. I don't know whether the guy left. He didn't get back. It came out. 
it didn't get distribution, and even with a shop. I'm gonna say you had that you had them so, you had them for sale next to the register, right? Yeah, they're brilliant. It's a brilliant album, but yeah. without the distro, it's hard. You know, they they sh they sell enough copies to get you another one. Yeah. Um, and un until your shop becomes really influential, and it, people will just go there, and you only sell a few things. Yeah, that, yeah. That was a, that was a tough sell. So I don't, you know, distro is really important. Uh, but yeah, that's what I'm interested in. Where's the where where's the money coming from? It, it adverts, is it shows, is it merch, is it are you becoming an influencer? Are you becoming a you're gonna do chat shows? What what is it? What is this? A music? lot of these guys are doing crazy views and not getting any money. Like just broke for the views for the views or anything. Yeah. Off of you know four million players on Spotify and getting yeah you know, a few grand like and it's not. But that's got to be pivotable. Yeah. Because yeah, I think so. Because if you if you're gonna go to if as long as you've got. I've got a plan, you know, what's your plan? And if you can get 4 million, I mean, how many plays have you got? Flame Griller are doing all right. I'm doing shit. <laughs> <laughs> my, my plays are work. Even though you've had all this press. And... Even the press, man, even, yeah, even play, I, I sold some records. Yeah, yeah. But we're, we're talking a couple of hundred. Yeah, but that's I mean? good, to it's be not, fair. It's not bad, yeah, and I've got a nice WhatsApp list of people, but it's like, I, you know, I, it's the scalability of it, and I feel like I am. I'm, all, I'm, all, I'm trying to get my Instagram stuff a bit more, and I'm trying to talk, but I'm just telling the same people who fucking either bought it or made the choice not to <laughs> the same shit, and it's like reaching outside of that without without well, uh, advertising spend to try and go. I'm this guy, and I did this, and you know what I mean. And starting again with loads of new people. Well, you're I'm a good case study, way. actually. We should we should get together and um, not see Open see up. if we can find. You know, let's find out where where you really want to be, because you might be already here. This is it. I've thought about it a few times. I've actually talked to a PR company about it. It was like, right, what do you want to, what do you want to do? What do you, I don't fucking know. I just, you know what I mean? You, you Put music want, out. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, but, but that, but truth of the matter is I'm not, I'm, I are, I'm not going, I want to be here. I want to be playing that. I want to sell this. I haven't got a specific thing. It's about. Because you're right on the, you know, I could see you with a, a good agent. You, your live shows are brilliant. So you could have a good show. Okay. You've got an original concept. Your videos are great press records, you get press. You on paper, it should work. On paper, everything's there. This <laughs> yeah, is the yeah. thing I'm trying to work with other people. I don't know there's, there's that much hunger for it compared to like, there's younger artists coming through with a bit more of a, a modern sound, I guess. I, I'm still in a bit of a boom bap breaks and beats kind of Yeah, but you do it with a twist. Yeah, and it's a bit grumble rap old manny, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I don't that's know still how a much, twist. Yeah, yeah. I think there's an audience and people of my, of my and our age group <clears throat> but like I think for a younger for a younger field I don't think they want to hear about an old man who's like oh my back hurts no definitely not I was I was uh, asked recently to recommend a DJ uh, as I said but, but not you we need a younger guy <laughs> <laughs> but not you don't recommend yeah, yourself and it's like I get it I get it it's uh, we need a younger guy yeah you do you do need a younger guy and that's just for the DJ that's not even yeah, like that's not even the artist you look too old up there lad yeah you know people saying at 40 you know, some bearing in mind of 50 this year, but 40, it's done. That's bullshit, innit? But it's bullshit. Same with, kind of same with rappers. No one wants to see, you know, they are wheeling out these old rappers and they're like... <laughs> wheeling out the old rappers. I, I, I might regret saying this, but we did a gig supporting Sugar Hill Gang in Huddersfield. And it was like they were off the old man bus. They were getting, oh, here you come. Yeah, yeah. Like helping him with his art yeah, as he walks up, helping him on stage and stuff. And you're like, Jesus fucking Christ! Can yeah. these guys get a retirement? Yeah, well, <laughs> that, that just shows you what little money they got from publishing and 100%. the fact that they're having to get on a plane and come over here. Yeah, and and perform is at uh, smaller venues as well, where kind of knobheads like me supporting. Jesus Christ, poor guys. Considering they were like, I remember seeing Martha Reeves and thinking, why, why are you here? I yeah, mean, it was incredible, but maybe that's the energy. Maybe they want to be out there again before. True, I guess. Yeah. But it's not like, not like top of the game, sell out massive venues, isn't it? I remember like James Brown towards the end of his life was like playing Bradford. <laughs> I mean, James Brown. Four, 500 people venues in Bradford. And you're like, Jesus Christ, how did that happen? Yeah, well, yeah. Is, is, that, where, is that where it ends? Well, maybe, yeah. I suppose if you spend it all or it gets, it gets sucked out of you by the label or ex-wives. I, th I think they were, they were exploited. They, they, all these artists it's very were, likely. were exploited because these were massive. When you Course. think of the Sugar Hills and... Yeah, who made all the money for like all the James Brown samples and stuff when they yeah, got Yeah, well, he gave it for cleared. free. He, he, yeah? yeah, he came out and said, I'm not going to charge any of the kids for using my records. What a G. 
What a G. What a G. Um, I mean, he's crazy. They're still discovering music that he made that because he just would finish a concert and then go and straight go to the straight studio. Straight to the studio. What a, what a legend, nuts. man. So he's, uh, yeah, he just carried on blasting it, didn't he? Right mm. through to the end. <laughs> Let everybody use his music for free. We brought him back into Vogue. Yeah, yeah. Then he toured off. So it all sort of worked for him. Yeah. Like, put me out there again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he'd lost yeah. it to Prince and Michael Jackson and they'd taken over from him. Yeah. So that was uh, probably a good move. But yeah, he'd be he'd be on fortunes now. Um, so released, so released is like label wise. Well, you, you said that house lady remind me working, of her name. Working classic Shauna. Shauna, is that going to be a release thing, well, or are you keeping that? No, as a no, separate that's her, that's, label? that's her. That's all her branding. He's just he's taking all that experience from released and saying, the one thing I'm not going to do is try and work out what 18 year olds want to listen to yeah yeah, but what, yeah. one thing we can do is operate the label so I'm, I'm, I'm talking to our good friend mike at the moment mike greenall oh okay yeah yeah whose music music knowledge is ridiculous crazy with it so i'd like to do something with him where we bring all his crazy knowledge to the forefront and we do an album they're not making it, but that. a licensing album yeah you know and and that's something you do on released that's how yeah, you use that. Yeah, I think we could just do it as a, as, a, as a series, you know, we could do it as a series. But I just, again, I just want to run the business and get it all working. And then knowing that I've got the authenticity of Shauna, the authenticity of Mike yeah. is, is good enough for me to roll with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and we'll, then we'll push it out. So that, that uh, these sort of, I've just pivoted a little bit and tried to sort of find people who were brilliant. Uh, their specific thing and, yeah, and utilize that. Seeing where we can go with that. I've got you know, a bit more It's time. a new hustle. Yeah, whole new hustle. <laughs> You're just going to keep going forever, aren't you, really? Just You've new always hustles. Because you get excited about certain little things that you just want to keep pursuing and like, yeah. I like it. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Flipping box sets. Flipping box sets. Because that's another hustle of yours. Like every time I see you, you've got a, a, a Word document ready to go about why <laughs> we could do this and that'd work. So Fli well, flipping box sets, it, it was from Marco. who just said, what we're going to do about the flipping these, box sets. These thousands of box yeah, sets that you've them, ended up People with. aren't buying them. They don't want them in the record shop. Well, ah, flipping box sets. So we, we'll give them out. And obviously with the job you did with uh, OP1 and Hashfinger. Dweller. Yeah. Jason Beats. Top but original. it was the fact that the way you did it as well, you got them to do videos. It was it was really precise. It was cool, yeah. It was really cool. Yeah. And it just, you know, giving them a box set and getting them to split it, I thought, why don't we just do this together? Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. And, and do this as a, as a joint project. We've got tons of box sets. It'll be interesting. You know, I, t I took them to the Pack Horse. I've left them with... Um, Charles. No, I, I saw him. I told him his album was there. Right. Whether he took it or not. Ouch. But it's right. okay. Um, T. Jackson's has taken them all. Your The ones for your guys are wrapped in sellotape. Oh, sick. Um, fingers crossed. But they, yeah, they, everyone loved it. And as I was leaving, um, um, Mr. Mushington was like, Where's, I need a box set off you. I was like, oh, they're all up there. And he, so and he got him flipping one as well. And he went, he went and got one. And I thought, this is a good thing. But yeah. it's not just for hip hop guys. It's for anyone who just wants to put a sample on, find something. Yeah, um, and and create kind of like any producer in it, I, I, the, the, especially around these ways. It's any producer, it. yeah. Who's going to get a record player out and make a little video? It's it's encouraging the video side of things, the self promotion, using the social well, yeah, sampling, yeah. It incorporates lots of different stuff, yeah. Um, and I, yeah, it would be cool to get like as many producers as possible on that. It'd be great to do a hundred of them. Would be so sick and different producers and different. A hundred box sets, a hundred producers. A hundred box sets, a hundred producers, and you, and you just saw it this all. This time next up, year, like, baby. Eh? This time next year. Yeah, a hundred. <laughs> but you can, you can, we can push them out. You know, we've got so many box sets, and it's an endless supply. Yeah, we can push them out to anybody if they're up for it. I've sent loads out that haven't done it. Um, that's why your guys are impressive. They flipped it. Drive. It was back. I, yeah, the drive. I got the guys who would do it. That's yeah, yeah, why yeah, I had yeah, no yeah. producers that wouldn't. There's loads of it. guys who were just sitting on them, me included. You know, I've got a drum machine sitting there. You're going to flip one? I should flip one. Oh, man, I'd I like should to flip hear one, that. Yeah. We've, got, we've just found one at the lockup, actually. I was there just before I came to see it. And it's considering the release logo, it's just bird noises. It's a box set of bird noises. <laughs> Surely we've got to flip that. Could we uh, do something with it at least? Yeah, yeah, yeah put some birds over. I remember when we were over at yours listening through and I was like, we're not giving that box set to this guy. We're not giving that. And you're like, I can find something on this. First time you put the needle on it. Yeah, pretty much making a banger out of it. it so was. it's possible, even Eddie. if they look like dog shit, that yeah, they'll be okay, gold. man. So, and yeah. it's just noises now. They just need noises. It, doesn't, right. it doesn't have to be 
that sample that's going to change your life. 100 producers by the end of 2025. That's what, that's that's what, what the we're goal aiming is. for, man. 100 producers, 100 <laughs> box sets. We've started with the two compilations, but we'll do it single artist going forward. Yeah. Single artist, we'll send you the box set or take it free, flip at least two. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's a two track EP, but do more if you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let's see, uh, and then let's make a piece of vinyl about it at the end. Perfect, when that's we put it. We put the best of, maybe get everyone to vote it in or something. Sick. Tony, I'll probably call it there, man, but thank you so much for giving me your time, bro. I really appreciate it, man. You're an absolute legend. Thanks, bud. Leeds Enjoyed thanks that. you. <laughs> <laughs> Leeds thanks you. Absolutely love chatting to Tony. He's such a sick guy. And uh, even just listening through it back, I was like, there's some tips in here. There's some like hints and tips and some ideas and just wants to just just gets me revved up, ready to like put some music out or be or at least be nice about music. <laughs> <laughs> not just hate on it so yeah can't thank tony enough for uh, giving me a bit of time and um we recording the podcast in melody 71 uh, you might have heard us at the end talking about uh flipping box sets uh if you are interested in that gay as a producer and you want to get involved you can get out yourself a box set and flip a beat with it and it'll get put out um please get in touch with me you may as well at xp.ben on instagram big up <laughs>